Today we're going to talk about rebuilding the bank regulator on the Lifeline Global Manifold. Before we start, we need to make sure that we have a clean area to work from. We've taken the cart, we've put some nice clean tiles down uh, so that we have some clean area. We also need to have clean tools. So if you're using older tools, you may want to clean them with a degreaser. The key here is that we do not add any contaminants to anything that we're working on today. So we've cleaned our tools, they're all nice and clean, and we've got a clean work area. Uh, next, we want to make sure we got the right kit. So if you look at the manual, you'll see the kit part number. Each kit contains an instruction that tells you not only contents of the kit, parts that you're going to need, but clear instructions on how to do the assembly. So we have our kit already opened up, parts laid out uh, from the box right here. So we'll start here by pulling the cover off. There's two clips, one on either side. We'll need to isolate the bank. Today we're going to work on the left bank. So we've isolated the valve there. We've closed our master valve. We've pressed our relief valve to make sure that we've got no pressure. So no pressure on the bank regulator gauge here, no pressure on the gauge there. So we're sure that we're at zero. First step, remove the dome bias tubing. Next step, we're going to remove this adjusting stem. You'll note that we put some lines on there so that it'll help us get things back together like it was. First thing we'll do is break the lock nut free with a 26 millimeter wrench. And then we're going to remove the adjusting stem using a 19 millimeter wrench. And we're going to count the number of turns that we take to remove this so that when we go back together we can get the regulator adjusted about to where it was before. How many turns was that? Six? No, that was eight. Eight, eight turns, okay. Very good. Next step, we'll remove the dome using our large two inch socket. Um, and I know two inches converts to 50 millimeters, but I can tell you that a 50 millimeter socket will be a little bit tight on there. I recommend you go with a 52. So we'll get our big wrench and our big socket and a short extension and we'll remove this dome. We get it off the O-ring. The dome should screw out of there fairly easily. And when we pull this out, be careful that you don't lose the small brass button that's on top of the piston. We're going to pull that out and set that aside so we don't lose that. Next step is to remove the seat and piston subassembly. So we'll use a 22 millimeter socket our extension with a wrench and we'll remove that. So you'll have a seat, you'll have a piston, sometimes the spring stays inside the regulator. Um, we'll use our o-ring pick to slide it out. Okay. Now we've got our old components on the table. Now, recognize that in the kit, you get a new seat and a new piston subassembly. So we'll throw the old ones away. We have to reuse the spring and the post button. All right, so we'll take our new parts, lubricate the O-ring with some Crytox grease. We use brand name Crytox, but um, if you have another oxygen safe compatible grease, uh, we can use on the O-rings that'll work too. So as we're installing this seat and piston subassembly, it's easier if you put your little post on there and push in on the piston so that you can remove the pressure. That way you can screw the seat down with your fingers all the way. We get it close to all the way down, we can use our socket to finish tightening it up. Now the 
seat will be torqued to 30 foot pounds. And our torque wrench. And 30 foot pounds is 41 Newton meters. And to our click. All right, next step is we're going to replace the O-ring inside the body. So we'll use our pick and we'll pick out our body O-ring and replace that. Before you install that O-ring, um, put a little bit of lubricant on it. Um, you know, put a little lube between the fingers, lubricate the O-ring before you get it installed. Next, we'll have to replace the O-rings in both the dome and then also the adjustment stem. So we can push the dome out with our pick. Replace the dome O-ring with a new one. Slide it back together. We'll need to replace the O-ring on the stem. And we'll use once again the same pick. Put the new O-ring on there. Uh, lubricate it uh, for assembly. Assembly steps. We're going to put the dome back in place. Making sure you haven't lost your little button in there. Hand tight, then he'll get a big socket back out. Finish tight, and the torque setting on that is gonna be 50 foot-pounds, or approximately 68 Newton meters. Down until it's tight, then he'll get a torque wrench out, and torque to 50 foot-pounds. Click, very good. Now we reinsert the adjustment stem. And we're going to count the number of turns back in so we get it close to where we were before. And we'll spin it around and line our marks back up once we get to the right number of turns. We'll uh, loosely snug up our lock nut because we'll need to make a final adjustment. Okay, now we gotta connect our dome bias tubing. Okay, tubing connected. Now we'll do our adjustment. So in order to adjust this regulator, we're gonna open our uh, main line valve. We'll put pressure on the regulator. We'll verify that we've got close to the right pressure on the output. Uh, then we can put this regulator online and make final adjustments by adjusting the adjustment stem.